In today's video, we're gonna be adding not just one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight brand new buildings to our Lego city. Let's go ahead and jump in. guys so just a quick look at the city you'll see here we've got a pretty empty section over here we're gonna be filling that up with buildings so I have been thinking a lot about the Hogwarts Castle guys and you've noticed that I've kind of reduced the footprint here I have really enjoyed having the Hogwarts Castle in the city it is just a facade and so my ultimate plan is to reduce our very wide Hogwarts Castle to some sort of like a base plate to a base plate and a half building that will still function as a university in our city but it's been kind of a crutch for us as far as the Lego city goes but I think what I'm gonna do we're gonna completely remove Hogwarts from the city we're gonna add all of our new buildings and we're gonna see how new Brickerton looks without Hogwarts What's up everyone, welcome back to yet another video. I'm back in the lab working on the city. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update as I continue to refine the city and work the train track into the layout. I'm gonna go ahead and run you through all the changes I've made for this city update. So some of these new buildings I have shown on the channel before, others I definitely haven't. So let's go ahead and run through all the new stuff. So the biggest and most obvious addition is clearly the Daily Bugle. It's the biggest Lego set I've ever owned, and I've always loved Spider-Man, so this one makes me immensely happy. I'm sure you're all well and familiar with the Daily Bugle. Next door to the Daily Bugle is my custom Avengers Tower complex mock. Next to the Bugle, the B Avengers Tower does look a little bit puny, but making the Avengers Tower taller is definitely a part of my long-term vision for the city. Filling out the rest of the street right now are three of the Nick Build City Series buildings. These buildings are primarily placeholders for right now as all the backs are open. And once I get some more official LEGO modulars, these ones will be the first to go. Eventually, I want the city to look good on all sides and open backs are not conducive to that. I think we've got a pub, a Roman restaurant, and a coffee shop, an apartment. I've added one more house to our residential area the Lakeside Lodge from Fun Hole, which I did do a review on a few months ago. This one is more of a lake house than a house you'd see in the suburbs, but I think it looks fantastic. It is the only building I have so far with lights. A small addition that has finally completed my block of mini modulars is the new Noodle Shop set, Creator 3-in-1. It's a great corner piece, and I set it back from the curb even more than usual, leaving room for minifigures and street vendors on the corner. The mini modulars are another thing that will eventually move once I have more official Lego modulars and bigger buildings, but I think the mini modulars will be a great way to fill in all the little small areas of the city where there may be some awkward spacing. The last new building is one that I definitely know is gonna move here soon, and that's the Mr. Chill Ice Cream Shop, which I just tucked over here in the very corner. Um, I've just placed this here as a stand-in. I think eventually once I rebuild the Hogwarts Castle, it will be placed in this corner. Um, I'll tell you more about where the Mr. Chill Ice Cream Shop is gonna, going to live here in just a few moments. Along with these new buildings, I've continued to work on the curbs and street details. As you'll see, more and more of the curbs are on mills plates now, which adds that nice elevation to the curb and adds depth to the street level. With the curbs, the narrow roads are definitely uh, accentuated, so I definitely understand why people like to usually add a few studs to the road width when using the new LEGO road plates. 
and maybe someday I will do that, but our table isn't super huge, so for now, I think it looks fine. I'm formulating a plan for the train crossing, where it goes through the middle of the table. I'll be building the train into the pavement, so it really looks like it was built alongside the city. I am super excited to get it fully integrated. It's just kind of looking really plain right now. But in our next major LEGO City update, I'll be making major changes to the beach and water area. My girlfriend pointed out that the water area is probably too big at this point, the actual water itself. And at this point, I cannot agree more. Removing a row of base plates from the water will free up three new base plate spots that can be used for buildings like the ice cream shop, we can expand the skate park, and we can have room for much more activities. I'll be putting the beach on Mills plate soon as well, adding some fine details, a gradient into the water. I am very bummed about moving this pier that I'm pretty proud of, but I'm sure I can find another way to incorporate it in the water area. I will also be adding a train station in the next city update, so make sure you guys hit subscribe down below, leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this city update, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.